Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to control a smart home with the new Yolo V8 model. So we're going to use this Yolo V8 model for optic detection. So we can actually control a smart home. We're going to turn on and off the lights based on if we take people in the image. So we can actually control my lights in my living room. We're going to see that at the end here. First of all, we'll go through how to set up the Yolo V8 class and also how we can connect to the Philips Hue bridge. You can also use this for Wish. I'm going to create another video about that. So definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video so that you will get a notification when I upload that video. So we can both control our smart home with Philips Hue and Wish. So we basically just jump into the code, see how we can set it up, and then we're going to see some really crazy results at the end. So we're going to jump straight into Visual Studio Code. I'm going to show you how we can use the YOLO V8 class that we made in one of the previous videos. So if you want to know more details about that, definitely go check that one out. We basically just create a class where we load in the new YOLO V8 model. We can just specify what model we want to use. We can also train our own custom models. I have videos about all of those different kind of things on the channel. Then we're basically just going to take an image. I'm going to have a webcam in my living room streaming over Wi-Fi to this computer here. And then we're going to run inference on that and control the smart home and my lights in my living room based on the predictions we get from our Yolo V8 model. So first of all here, we're just going to import the different modules. We're going to set up the optic detection class. Then we're going to connect to the Hue bridge and then we can actually just turn on and turn off the lights based on the predictions that we get. So first of all, we just import the different modules. We need PyTorch to run this YOLO V8 model. We also import CV2 so we can do our image processing. We can load in our images. We can also display the detections and visualize the results. Here, we're ju just going to use the YOLO class from Ultralytics. So we can use the YOLO V8 model, just directly load that in. We're also going to use supervision for the detection part. And then from Philips Hue, we can import bridge and then we can connect to it with our IP address. You can basically just go into the app and then you can find the IP address um, under settings. You'll basically, basically just specify your IP here and then you're connecting to the bridge. Then we can use this to actually just connect to the light. You just go in, specify the name of the light as I'm going to show in just a second. So first of all here, you just need to pip install all these different things. So I'm just going to open up a terminal. I'm just going to show you how we can pip install the hue. So basically here we just uh, hit pip install as with any other framework or library that we're going to install. So we just have pip install. And then it's just called P Hue for Philip Hue. We can see that my requirements are already satisfied, but this is the only step you need to do to actually like, um, import this Philip Hue bridge that you can then use for controlling your smart home and your Philip Hue light. And then all other things here is basically just the same as in the previous previous videos. We have our optic detection class. First of all, we set up our video capture. If we have a CUDA, CUDA device available, we're going to use that. So CUDA, if it is available or else we're just going to run it on the CPU. We're going to load in a model here as well. So first of all, we just have a function for loading in the model. If we just go down and take a look at that, we basically just have load model. We set our model equal to the YOLO class and then we specify the model that we want to use. So this is the pre-trained YOLO V8 nano model. So again, we're going to use the nano model in this example here just to show you that we can get some really nice predictions even though we're running on the nano model. We can also like choose a, a, like a larger model, but we want to have this running in our living room controlling our light. So we don't want like too large of a model uh, running and we don't really need that if we're just going to detect persons in the frame. Our detections will actually like, be a bit slow when we're going to run it. It is not because of the size of the model. Like I can run the YOLO V8 large model with up to like 50 frames per second, but our frames per second will be around 10 frames per second because I'm going to use the webcam from my phone in the living room and then I'm going to stream the images um, over the Wi-Fi and then we're going to load it in with OpenCV so that will take up some of the processing and just the delay of actually like, loading in the images will slow down this uh, project and application. Then we're just going to fuse our model and then we're going to return it. So we just have self.model. We, we just load in the model uh, that we want to use. We can set up the class names dictionary and then we're going to set up this box annotator that we're going to use to act like draw these bounding boxes. I go way into way more details in the YOLO V8 um, tutorials I have here on the channel where we actually like implement this class. So we also have this predict function. We basically just take in a frame. We have our model. We pass the frame through our model. We get the results. And then we're just going to return those results from this predict function. Now we go down and just use the results to plot our bounding boxes. So first of all, we can extract all the information, the X, Y, X, Y's coordinates of our bounding box, the confidence scores, and also the class IDs. 
then we're just going to have a for loop running through all of our detections. First of all, we just set the class ID. We can extract the class IDs from the results like this, and also the X, Y coordinates for our bounding box and our confidence scores. So here, if the class ID is equal to zero, that means that we have actually detected a person in the frame, and then we're just going to append the results from that person we detected. We're going to append that to those lists here, and then we can use that to determine um, when we should turn on and turn off the lights, as we can see down here um, in the next line of code. So here we're just going to use the class ID. So if the length of our class IDs is greater than zero, which means that we actually like have people detected in the room, then we're going to turn on our lights in the living room. We basically just have our bridge, so our B instance here. So we have B.setLight. Uh, and then we basically just specify the name of the light. So I have two light sources in my living room that we're going to turn on. So that will be living room one and living room two. This depends on the name that you assign to your light, uh, light source in the field of shoe app. Then we're just going to specify on, we're going to set that equal to true. So if our class length is greater than zero, which means we have a person in the room, we're going to turn on the lights, Else, if we don't have any detections in our room, we're just going to set them equal to false. So we're basically just going to control our light based on the predictions that we get from our YOLO V8 model. So this is actually like a really cool project that we can use in, in real life. We can actually like control something in our home based on these detections from the YOLO V8 model. And as you can see here, it is pretty simple to set up. So we can actually like create some really nice applications around this for the detections and for the bounding boxes that we're going to visualize, we're going to use Supervision from RoboFlow. So we basically just have imported Supervision as SV. We just create detections with our confidence score here, our bounding boxes, and also the class ID. And then later on, we can just call this function um, box underscore annotator dot annotate. We pass in the frame, the detections, and also the labels that we want to show. Then we're going to return the frame here because this is basically the function for plotting our bounding boxes. So now we're going to go down to our call method in this class. We're going to open up a video capture with OpenCV. So here we can just set the capture index. We're going to specify that when we create an instance of our class. We just assert that our capture is actually like open. We set the frame width and the frame height. So this is how you can control the resolution of your images. I'm just going to set it to full HD here so we can see some really nice results. My application here and project would not really be slowed down by the resolution of the images or the network that we're going to use, but by actually like transferring the frames from our uh, Wi-Fi connection from my mobile phone here to my computer. So if I just use like a USB webcam, it will be way, way faster. And I could be able to run like 50 to 100 frames per seconds on my PC. So then we're just going to have our while loop running as long as we want to until we hit escape or Q on a keyboard. And then we're going to terminate our program. First of all, we just start a timer. We read in a frame from our webcam. We store it in this frame variable that we can then use to throw through our model. We call this self.predict function. So we basically just take a frame, pass it through the model, and then we get the results. We can then use those results here to plot our bounding boxes and also control the lights. So we are controlling the lights inside of this plot boxes function. You could also like return the results and then you can have another function for act like controlling your smart home. So that would act like be a pretty good idea. So we pass in the frame and also the results and then we get the frame back again with all the detections drawn on top of our frame. Then we can end our timer, calculate the number of frames per seconds. We're just going to put out the number of frames per seconds on our frame. And then we're going to use imshow from OpenCV to visualize our results that we have in the frame. And then we're going to control the lights and then we can see how it acts like works out. We just have our if statement here checking if we hit escape on a keyboard, we will terminate our program, release our webcam and destroy all the windows that we have opened up with OpenCV. Down here, we're just going to create an instance of our class, which is called detector. We set that equal to optic detection, and then we just specify the capture index of our act like camera. They could act like be zero if you only have one camera um, connected to your computer. We basically just call this detector call function down here at the bottom, and now we're ready to control the lights in my living room based on the detections that we get from the YOLO V8 model. So now we're going to run the program. We can see the detections here in the frame. We get around 10 to 12 frames per seconds. Again, that is because I'm streaming my uh, frames from my camera on my phone to the computer. Here we can just see we get all the detections. We get a really nice confidence score both for the person, but also all the other objects. But here in this example, we only care about the person detection. 
we get around like 0 0.8, 0 0.9 in, in confidence score. So we act like pretty confident when we're doing these detections of the person. Here we see that lights act like turns on pretty nicely and also turns off again when I'm going out of the frame and we don't do the detections. Here we're basically just going to see me moving around in my living room. Then the lights will turn on based on if we act like get detected in the frame. This also works with multiple persons. But again, the idea behind it is that we want to control these lights based on if there's any persons in the room or at least in the frame. We could also have like multiple cameras and so on and then merge the detections. But here we can see it works very nicely when I'm moving around. You can basically like control your whole home. Let's say you have different like light sources. You just have a camera in each room. Then you can actually like just go in and turn the lights on based on the detections for each camera. So you can actually like control like every single room of your house. That would act like be pretty cool to do as well. Here we can just see that I'm controlling my living room. And again, it acts like works out pretty smoothly. The lights act like turn on in a very natural way when I'm walking into the frame and act like going um, inside of the room. I act like want the lights to turn on at the exact same time as it does. So this acts like a really cool application and project that we have done. You can try out more light sources and I'm also going to do another video where we're going to use the Wiz lights instead of the Philips Hue. <laughs>